Good afternoon, um, this is Chris at DNGRMS Photography and um, we're doing the Fro Nose Photo Raw Edit of the Week and it's number 49 uh, this week and uh, we've got 48 down here already which um, is a video that I've already done so we'll move that out of the way. My desktop is an absolute nightmare uh, and really needs tidying up. Uh, so we've got Raw Edit 49 so we've already downloaded the files, we've got two files today uh, and the first video uh, I'm going to do a edit on the Polaroids that um, that Jared took with uh, with Adam Lear and uh, we're going to do those in Photoshop because what we're going to do is going to do a triptych image so three photos on top of uh, a background and the background is going to be a wooden uh, plank uh, good texture for that so um, a few things uh, to, to, to work on on this one so we'll grab this and we'll drag it onto Photoshop I'm using CS5 today there we go here we go, so opening it up in the camera raw editor. Uh, just let it think about it. There we go, so we've loaded it up. Um, some great little retro images, uh, Polaroids as well. So you've got the Polaroid, Polaroid border. We're going to try and keep that on, but we're going to uh, crop those out, and we'll, you'll, I'll show you that in a second. So, what we want to do is I want to see if I can bring out as much colour as I can in here in the Adobe Raw uh, editor, the ca uh, camera raw editor. Um, bring out as much colour as I can because then when we put it on the background and really try and bring out the contrast of the background as well and just make it look absolutely quality. So in terms of the, the histograms probably a little bit misleading here because we're actually looking at these images rather than the image itself. Uh, so the image itself might be well exposed but we want to try and look at the exposure on these. So the histogram is going to be pretty useless um, in terms of looking at these images. So this is going to be very much by eye. Um, pump the exposure a little bit just to see if we can get a few more of the details out uh, and maybe try some fill light as well just to sheen it out a bit and obviously we need to get some contrast just to pump it up and the, the, the more you pump this contrast, wow, the more you pump this contrast up the, I'm guessing we're going to need to just pop in a little bit of fill light just to make sure we don't lose too much detail. Now the clarity tempted to throw that up a little bit, uh, not too far, although it doesn't, it holds out pretty well if you pop it up too far. Um, so we're just going to leave it at around 40, 42, or 43. We're going around 40 uh, just to hold some some of the crisp detail uh, and then still a little bit of the vibrance as well. Now we're getting somewhere that uh, I'm a bit more happy with. Completely ignore the background, uh, that will be going in a second. Move this around, hold down spacebar to move the images around and uh, tone curve we'll see if we can keep the highlights and the lights up a little bit and maybe even just push the darks into the light area as well just really raise up this s curve there we go just to try and push it into a little bit more detail hold up that detail right noise um again it's a photo of the photo so pushing the luminance up I don't think it's going to do that do a great deal because there's no actual noise in the image. If we do that, we can always play with the detail and see if we can maintain the detail. There's not enough of the movement on that, so we'll leave that there. Right, um, just make that fit to the page. I think they are the images we're going to use. Now, the images, we're going to use three images. We'll see a triptych. Uh, definitely want to use this one. We'll love the one with the, uh, with the hands coming out, uh, and I like the... Defoot their deformation of the corner. We're going to use Adam Lerner and then we've just got a choice of these two. And I think we're going to go with this one here. Um, just because it's a little bit closer in, uh, slightly more light on his face, so we've got a little bit more um, tone, tonal detail on his face. So if we open this image, pretty happy with that, I think. Maybe just pull back on the clarity of fraction. Uh, are we blowing out on any of the whites? Nope. Contrast brightness. Temperature, should we warm the pictures up a fraction? See if we can get a little bit of a tint on the photos. Too far is too far. We don't want it to go blue. Where will we start with? 8,500. Let's pump it up. Pump it up a little bit. Let's take it to 9,000. Right, so we'll open the image. Now, before we open it, I've had a, a couple of you send me messages saying that uh, I've got to remember to make sure I'm on 16 bits per channel when I open it in the image rather than. 8 bits per channel, so I'm going to change that to 16, it's just down here, Adobe RGB 1998, um, and that's 16 bits per channel, not 8 bits per channel, and then when you're editing the photo you'll have more more uh, clarity and more detail to, to play with, so set that at 16, 
and we shall hit open image. Clink! That's going to open that up. Now, we've got those images in. What we're going to do is we're going to just select, select uh, each of the images and drag them across to our background, which we haven't got yet. So let's have a look at our background. Now, I've got a collection of textures, which I've gained over the years. Um, we've got some wood ones here. So we've got aged wood, cracked wood, which could be quite cool. Uh, but the one that we're going to use, is it wood texture or old wood? There we go, wood texture. So old wood, we're going to use this one here. And that's going to be our image. So we're going to open this up. And then some of you who hopefully saw my video from last week, uh, where we were talking about content aware scale, uh, we are going to use that um, the, the same idea and we're going to stretch this image. So we're going to make these triptychs probably be a thousand pixels across each. So that's 3,000 pixels wide plus the gap in between each one. Uh, so we're looking about three and a half thousand pixels wide. So let's have a look at the image size of this and we're at two. So let's bump the canvas size up. Now this is still remembering my settings from when we did the baby, so we don't want relative on, we want to be exact on this. Uh, 2000, so we want to go to 3500. I keep forgetting to do this, got to turn this background into a layer before we do it, otherwise we end up with a nice white space on either side. Pixels, 3500 pixels is what we want wide. And we'll just pump the size up as well to 2000. Plenty of size on this now. Do, 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 do. Shall we try content aware fill? No, let's just stretch that out. So, stretch this out. I'm not going to worry too much about maintaining the aspect ratio. I don't mind about squishing this. We're just going to bump it out to here like that. And there we go. So, that's our old wood image. And just before we carry on, we're just going to rotate it around as well. So flipping it horizontally to keep that now we'll leave it back down the bottom. Leave the darkness at the bottom. There we go. Okay, so now we need to get these back over to our new background layer. So we've got a background layer here. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to select each one of these. Okay, that over there. Let's go a little bit further over because we can always move this. There we go. These are very, very well balance before they're shot. Right, so got our selection here, that's our number one photo. We're going to copy that, so Command C or Control C if you're on a <coughs> computer, and paste that in. So that's number one. And then because we've already got this selection, we can just move this over to our next image, place that where we want our selection, Command C and Command V to paste. And then the last one, Mr. Adam Lerner. There we go, Command C and V to paste. Right. So here are our images now. If we hold down Shift once we've got one selected, if we hold down Shift, then it will stay on the horizontal. Um, Mr. Gavin Hoey introduced me to that one, so thank you very much for some of his videos. And we'll move that one across to here as well. Now obviously they're all very <coughs> they're all quite large at the moment, so we need to bump these down to about a thousand each, so we shall transform these down. Now, let's see if we can just take it down to 70%, if we take them down to 70% each, probably a little bit small, 80%, uh, could do some math, but we're just going to do it by eye, and we'll do them all by 80%, click the tick, and that's number one there. Uh, layer 2. Let's do a transform here as well. 80% as well. 80% and 80%. And there's the next one. A tick again. And the last one, Mr. Adam Lerner. 80% again. 80%. And tick. Right, there we go. Just lost. Just lost. There we go. Okay, now do these fit? Now if we bump them up next to each other, and then what we can do as well, another tip that I saw on one of Gavin Hoey's videos, if we hold down shift, we've got our move key selected, if we hold down shift and press the arrow keys, it's going to jump in large spaces. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and let's do six, six. I 
we go. So six gaps across there. Now if we go back across and select Mr. Mr. Pollen over here, and same thing again, hold down shift, we've got the move tool selected, we're going to use the cursor keys, one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. So that is going to be our triptych image as a start. Now, I want to see if we can use as much of this as we can, so I'm going to move these down, so I've got a bit more of this texturing, because we're going to crop this and make it quite a long, wide photo. So we're going to use this detail down here, and I want to try and keep that in as well. So that's that. Let's take a crop of this. Again, it's all done by sight, this. Uh, but what we can do here now is we've got our rule of thirds. Um, we're going to see if we can get these rule of thirds to land roughly in the same place on all our photos. And we can also lose these third lines here just to make it seem to fit naturally. There we go. So again, hit our hit our tick box and we've got these up. Now we can close this down now, we don't need our NEF file to become a raw editor. And what we're going to do on here, we're going to add just a little bit of detail, some border around each of them and some some more uh, of a contrast. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the blending options of each of these. Um, right click on here, we've got blending options, we're doing this to add and learner first. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a drop shadow. Click on our drop shadow and you'll see it, you just about see it down there. We're going to make our size of the drop shadow significantly larger and also the spread if we can, once it's caught up. Quite a large image, there we go. And then you could play with the angle here, but it's always a lot more fun just to move it around from here. So I'm going to place it down like that. There we go. Maybe just Put the spread up a little bit just to keep it a little bit softer. Spot on. And then what we're going to do as well, we're going to add a stroke, but we're going to add a stroke on the inside. So if we click on stroke here and we go to inside, this is where we're going to try and get the Polaroid uh, border back in a little bit. Uh, we're going to do it in black. Uh, we're going to make it a nice large size so it looks like we've got a Polaroid. Um, but then what we can do, uh, what's that, 35 looks about right. Uh, we can change the blend mode. So if we take the blend mode, obviously we've got all the lightning uh, lightning blends here, and we've got all the darkening blends here. We want to lighten this because I want to be I want it to be um, a, a take a stylized take on the on the Polaroid um, Polaroid border. So if we go through these lightning ones here, we've got lighten, uh, which takes it out completely. Look, we've got we can only see where the shadow is. Uh, we've got screen, which I'm guessing will work quite well. No, uh, color dodge, linear dodge, and linear color. No, let's see if we can go into overlay then. Ah, here we go. So, overlay, soft light might work as well. Soft light's a little bit softer, but if we go to overlay, we can always move the opacity. But I like how dark it is down here. So, we're going to leave that. Maybe just pull the opacity back a little bit, or the opacity, depending where we are in the country. Um. There we go, so I'm quite liking that. Uh, and we might just add an inner glow as well, just to see if we can add a little bit of a stroke on the inside as well. Can we get that up? Mm -hmm. Size of it, it's not really showing, so we'll leave that one out. Okay, so we'll click OK on that, and that is our effects which is added into that. Now, nice and easy if we want to apply that to all three, we grab the effects here and hold down Alt, it is going to copy it onto layer 2 and layer 3. There we go, so we've got all three now with our nice border around the edge. Fantastic, now at the moment the background is not looking particularly dark, we want to really darken that background up, really add some contrast to make, those, to make these pictures pop out a little bit more, so we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to our background layer here and we're going to see if we can just pump the saturation and then we're going to play with the contrast let's see if I, uh, play with the hue let's see if we can get it down to a, a kind of a dark rusty red hue where's the reds da -da -da. 
Whatever here, there we go. That's not bad. Right, if we leave it there, we've got an orangey red, and then what we can do. That's not bad at all. Let's just put the lightness down a little bit, make it a fraction darker. No, that's going. It's not taking the contrast at all. So we're going to add a layers, uh, a levels adjustment there as well. And just really pull in the brightness of it. Pull back on the whites. Come on, it's not keeping up. Yep. Pull back on the whites here as well. Uh, now we're getting some. Okay. And then what we can do as well on this, if we add a layer just on top of our background layer, we're just going to darken in the corners as well. So actually, we could possibly do that rather than doing. I was going to do a brush tool um, and blacken this out. So if we just blacken this bit out over here and drop the opacity down, and uh, just add that darken. But what we're going to do instead, if I just drop that layer into the bin. Uh, we're going to select my adjustment layer here and we're going to burn it. So, we've got our burn tool here. We're going to really work on just the shadows and I'm going to bump the exposure, probably not that far, so let's pull the exposure back to about 20. Uh, it's always nice to do it in stages rather than all at once. And same thing, I'm going to have a massive, massive brush and we're just going to touch these corners, see if we can darken in these corners a little bit, especially up at the top. Uh, mm. There we go, lovely, lovely. Run across the top, let's get that in here. Bump up the exposure fraction to 50 so we can get all the way across there. Down here as well, let's get this bottom corner just to hold your eye into the photo. There we go. Now, you can see as well, just losing some of the detail in these borders. So we're going to zoom in a little bit in here and just dodge this time rather than burn. Dodge in down here just to bring some of this detail back. Uh, using the mid-tones, bump the exposure up a little bit. And come straight down here, holding shift to keep keep me in a straight line. Same on this one as well. So we're just affecting the borders here. Just bring out some detail in these polar lines. There we go. So again, see that? bringing out the contrast and these. Spot on. Okay, let's go back to a full size image and there we go. The only thing I'd do now is probably it's just because of the contrast of this, it might, it might be quite nice to precipitate and pull out some of the contrast in the images as well. So our Polaroids. Has been pulled back in, so let's pull that to 18 and pull the whites back as well. So if we pull that, that's 246, and then we'll duplicate 18 here, pull that into 18, and pull that back to 246, the whites, and it's same for this last one just to bring it out a little bit more. So 18 on this side, take out some of the blacks, and 246. Spot on. And there is my raw editor of the week. I'm going to put this up on the forum, and um, and then I'm going to do a, another video for the landscape, which I'm really looking forward to doing. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to go HDR or just see if I can pull out some of the detail in there. So, very quick cup of tea. Um, this is PG Tips again. Fantastic. So. Thank you very much guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Chris at DNGRMS Photography and I look forward to catching you all again soon um, for either another raw file edit of the week or some of my um, other videos about photo uh, photos and photography. Thank you very much for watching. Take